Welcome to the talk show from Hizing Bangladesh, sponsored by Crown Cement. And this is Sinha M. S. Saeed anchoring this very talk show. Today we'll discuss mainly on US visa policy and geopolitics with reference to the election pools government in Bangladesh. And for these very reasons, we have invited a special guest. One is Mr. Tanbir Shakil Joy, Member of Parliament belonging to Aum League. And other being Colonel Muhammad Abdul Haq retired, belonging to BNP. Well, how are you, Mr. Shakil? Very, very fine. Thank you very much for hosting me here. Well, you know very well that we are, we are facing so many interesting issues nowadays, especially regarding visa policy. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, the State Department mm -hmm. of USA, they have announced the visa policy restriction on some individuals. Mm -hmm. And they have clarified and they have given very wider definitions mm -hmm. that include members of enfor enforcement, political mm -hmm. parties, ruling and opposition, members of the business groups, member media personality, and we don't know, so many blocks are here. What is your understanding about all these things? Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you and my, uh, you're another guest, and also all the audience. Uh, as you rightly mentioned, that there is a uh, geopolitical dynamics to hold this visa policy issue, you know. Uh, especially when we look at it, uh, the Biden administration uh, had been using these visa restrictions and sanction on many nations. And definitely they have their own interest of foreign policy, you know. In Bangladesh, uh, on behalf of President Biden, US uh, Foreign Secretary Anthony Blinken, he actually had been conveying this message and when he declared the visa policy, uh, he mentioned that this visa policy will be applied on personnel who will uh, make obstacles to a free election or he will uh, make some obstacle in the process of freedom of speech and other democratic norms. So as you can see, this the definition is quite wide. My perception. Uh, I would say that the perception, oh, these things are there, the definitions are there. But I won't say that US is being just or fair in applying this visa policy to all the nations equally. If you think about the Israeli-Palestinian situation, just go back two weeks ago, you know, the Il Israeli forces actually put blockades to Muslims who actually went to Alaska Mosque to offer their prayer, you know. So that this kind of thing is a, a big violation of human rights, right? But is US imposing any kind of sanction there? They're not doing it, right? When uh, President Biden visited Vietnam, you know, there had been big number of allegations ag against the Vietnamese government, right? For uh, their uh, uh, there are not uh, enough space for civil society. Uh, there are not enough space to freedom of speech, everything in Vietnam. But they are, in, they are, had been, uh, they, they are being a very good partner of US. So US did not impose visa sanction there. So I think this is, this is a more geopolitical issue than whatever they are saying in front of the public, that uh, these visa restrictions issues. Uh, and I think as a political party, uh, we are not much concerned about it because our Honorable Prime Minister's uh, promise is also to make sure that uh, the next general election is free, fair and transparent. And even uh, uh, Secretary Biden also, uh, Blinken also said that they uh, did this visa policy to help the Bangladesh government to make sure that they can hold a free, fair and transparent election. So I think this visa policy will actually help us to have a, uh, a credible election. And also at the same time, I think this will make sure that political opposition like BNP Jamaat, they will not uh, create any anarchy. Because if they create any anarchy and that leads to, uh, you know, uh, unstable situation which can hinder the poll, then the visa restriction will get imposed on them. 
Thank you very right. much. Thank you very much. What about UN and ISIS? What uh, Mr. Sak Joy? He explained the whole thing from his standpoint as a member of parliament belonging to Aumi League. How do you view the, all these things? Thank you very much. My respected Dr. Sinha Muhammad Abu Said for having me in your program. And very popular program promising Bangladesh. I'm very delighted. I'm very honored by you. I also thank my very respected member of the parliament, Tanbir Sajib Joy. And so my dear listeners, witness, I feel very humble and well privileged to talk to you. Please, on this issue visa policies, which is going at this moment in Bangladesh, each and every individual is talking about it. Each and every citizen is very concerned about it. Top to bottom, everybody is very much concerned. Why? There are many reasons. For that, I take some time. So why this thing has been implemented? And before that, we have to know that we are poor country. Our people are not self-sufficient. They are not self-dependent. Country is not self-dependent. Our whole economy is dependent on the rich country of the world. And America is superpower. And superpower not in the military right only, military might only. They are superpower in economy. They are superpower in business sector. They are superpower in each and every sector of the world. And I like to say that why the government is so much concerned about it, telling one after another they don't like America, they don't, they, are, they had been, they had been opposing our independence, war of independence, so and so forth. Whereas China was also same category; they did not support it, they did not support our war of independence. But nowadays, I find every ministers, even mm. top ministers, they are making liaison with China and other countries. Those who had opposed their uh, liberation war. My dear sir, you tell me why our top brush, all of them have got business in America? Why they have sent so much of money by plundering the people's money in that country? They have deposited there, they have made their wealth there, they have their rich life leading their children. Their children are reading in America, in different university. Can it be acceptable? Once, why this visa policy is imposed? Because I like to say something on that. That is, what was our intention of having the liberation war in 1971? What was the reason? What was the aim we had been proceeding? What we used to get out of it? that we must not that must not forget that to establish democracy human dignity social justice for the people arthat in bangla amra jodi boli janoganer jonno sammo manubik morjada samajik nyay bichar ebong ganatantra pratishtha kora have we got that are we following that shadhinotar chetana which we our that did and Acting President Sayyid Nusrul Islam declared on 17th April 1971 as foreign government? No. What is going on now? Let me tell you one by one. Very shortly I say that. It is our misfortune that many poor people of this country sell their land, house, soil, wife's ornament and going abroad sending dollar money for Bangladesh foreign currency. Then another point may I, I take, like to say, many people today are deprived of getting total justice. Can you believe each and every member of the opposition party having 13, uh, uh, 30 to 100 mamla that is false case against them? A civil society, can they accept it? Even the Secretary General of BNP, he has got 100 cases against him. Did they, did they 
committed any such crime that for which every day they need to go to the court. This is injustice. These are looked after by the world power. And another thing, the top opposition political parties have been deprived of their right to hold meetings, much as procession. Today, government parties, terrorists are destroying their all the meetings. Their party, they are taking part with the police to kill, to, be, uh, to beat the opposition people. In a democratic society, it cannot happen, it cannot happen. Then opposition leader, you see what crime she has done. Same cases were lost against prime minister also, present prime minister also. And you have banished all cases against prime minister as you are in the power and you, are catch, you have catch hold of that old lady, 72 years old or 75 years old, about 90, she is dying. You are not permitting him to go abroad for good treatment. Whereas there are decoys, there are killers having mm. 10 years, 20 years jail. They are going abroad for treatment. Not only that, our, uh, our road and uh, transport minister, He's every week or even month, he's going abroad for treatment. Why this injustice is done to the opposition leader? It is really cannot be tolerated and people are helpless today. Not only that, your medical system is totally collapsed. Whereas this is the basic right of the people. And why people every day, hundreds and lakhs of people going India, Thailand, then Singapore, if our treatment policy and medical system would be improved. Now you see the education. Okay, thank you very much. We'll come to again. Okay. We'll go for a short let break. Let me tell you just one, sir. That means that's why we are undone. World power has seen, they have some sense. So that's the thought that if we don't do something, the people of this 18, lakh, 18 crore people will be sufferer in this country. Okay. And they have come to rescue us. Thank you. Mr. Tanvir Shakil Joy, you are known as a very, very outspoken personality, at least in the media world. You raise the question of hobnobbing with China. That is a very important thing. Right. And do you think all these things is going to take place because of only for geopolitics or other deficits in Bangladesh? Uh, let me uh, answer the question you asked and also some points raised by retired Colonel Hawk. I would like to begin with the last remark he made that the world power is undone. I agree with him. The world power is undone by the strength of Sheikh Hasin actually. Because the world power who actually once labeled Bangladesh as the bottomlet basket is uh, watching with surprise and awe that Bangladesh is the 31st largest economy in the world now, right? And that had been done by the sheer political will and farsighted vision of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina. Now, we are not agitated or we are not upset by the US visa policy. At the same time, the point we are making that this is the nation which under the leadership of Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, father of the nation, you know, you know, three million people sacrificed their life to have this country. So we won't get intimidated, intimidated by any world superpower. You know, and they, that, that's the thing uh, no superpower can do. Now, as you mentioned, hobnobbing with Ch uh, China, the word I used, we, China is our largest trade partner. And the infrastructure wise, tech wise, in every sector, China has big investment. And China is one of the largest superpower in the finance sector, in the whole, whole world, right? So definitely when Bangladesh is becoming from LDC to middle income country to by 2041, we want to be the developed nation. So we definitely need China as our one of the largest trade partner. 
China is our trade partner. China is not, uh, not our military partner. Or China is not our, we are not in the uh, communism bloc, right? So that we can say that we have the same ideology. And that's the message. And if you can see that US ambassador, uh, Mr. Peter Haas, he made a remark last week that he even praised Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina that she is doing a very fine balance between China, India, and US. And he praised it. And that, that is our foreign policy. You know, we, we do not want to have enemies. We want to have peaceful and fruitful relationship with everyone. And that, that's why China is one of our largest partners. Now, US and China, they, they are, become, they are one, uh, two superpowers, and they have their own tensions. They have their own complexities, right? They have their own equation. Why we should fall into that equation? You know, that's none of our business, right? But these superpowers are trying to make sure that that is our business, you know? Every block is trying to get us into their block. And that's why we are having all this tension, I think. Now, there had been uh, talks about social justice. There had been talks about democracy. Now, where was the social justice? Where was the democracy? When in 1975, father of the nation was killed, along with his wife, along with his two sons and three sons, who is Sheikh Rasel was 10 years old. Where was the democracy? Where was the social justice? And we saw that immediate past, you know, President Ziaur Rahman, who actually came as a military <laughs> dictator, you know, he ratified the indemnity ordinance, which was passed by, because you will find out that BNP always say, no, 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 it was done by Khandukar Mushtaq. We did not do it. Okay, you did not do it. We know that Khandukar Mushtaq did the indemnity ordinance. Why did you ratify it in the parliament? Why did you make sure that all the killers of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman getting indemnity? Why they were posted in high positions in the embassy abroad? So that means what? You are patronizing them, right? So there was no social justice that time. There was no democracy that time. And we f saw that seven years and then nine and a half years of army rule of uh, Irshad, you know, these all were there. And they, there was no voting rights. There was no social justice. There was no democracy. And uh, unfortunately, we found out that many superpowers actually supported them that time. But that time, maybe world politics was different. And we saw the same thing when BNP came in power in 2001. 21st August, grenade attack, right? Will you find a, such an incident in the whole <coughs> pol world politics that there was a state-backed terrorist attack on the largest political party? And after the attack, they staged drama of having like some petty criminal, or uh, I forgot even his name, what's his name? Uh, they staged some uh, drama and bring someone, uh, George Mia, you know, <laughs> to be main accused. So these all happened there, you know. There are, you cannot say that they, they are, they are, <coughs> there are no political rights, because whenever we say that one party in power, opposition, they face a case. Mr. Abdul Haq. Do you think the BNP should acknowledge what the wrong it did in the past? Thank you very much, sir. Very good question you have asked me. Just now, you have asked my dear friend, member of the parliament, why do you repeat the past? In Bengali, there is a sentence written by our poet, Nuzul Islam, national poet. Vidrohi kobi. Ambra cholibo poschate feli poncha butit. Giri guhachari kola prantore gahibogit. Chejati poschati tihashni boshatake. That nation cannot go forward. Let me tell you, my dear brothers, sisters, and speakers who all are witnessing this program, this is not the question of Jamaat and BNP. 10% people of this Bangladesh who are the owner of this country. Owner of this country. No political party is owner of this country. No individual can be, can be owner of this country. This is the People's Republic of Bangladesh. People's country. These people say it. 10% people want a pure democratic government for the people, by the people. They do not want any undue or irresponsible work 
or hegemony in the name of election. In 19, uh, in last 14 and 18 election, I know Mr. Joy accept it that both the parliament was illegal. Present parliament also illegal. Illegal. Totally illegal. And this was going to be declared by the then chief, <coughs> uh, chief justice and he was thrown out. Now, let me tell you why the visa, visa policy has come in. Just a minute, uh, Colonel Hawk. It is yes. not illegal. You can say immoral because from the point of view of constitution, it is legal. How? How can you say if it you, is legal. Put, you put a glass of water? That is, a different yeah. that is a different thing, but it is illegal because from the point of view of the constitution, it is illegal. But you can say there are so many things behind these things. Yes, I do agree. But thing is that I, I just posed a single question to you. Do you believe all the political parties, they were in power, should openly say, yes, I did some mistakes, I did something very good. Should they speak like this? Or should they say same drum? I have done no wrong, no wrong. So I am the clean. Do you think so all the political parties are clean? Nobody in the world, no individual from Adam till the last man in this world are 100% pure. So how can be a political party pure? They must have some love, uh, loopholes, <coughs> wrong thing, wrongdoing. I still remember in 1996, Present Honorable Prime Minister was putting on his up, turban, and has been in her hand addressing the nation, saying, My party did many bad things. Please forgive us. And elect us again so that we rectify ourselves and contribute to the nation. I think all the whole the nation have heard, I also heard that. My brother, he said something about um, political uh, the killing and all these things. See, this does not matter, that does not relate with the present, present political situation. You have totally made the country a, a, a totally a, tra what should I say, the festival government. Ah, terrorist, this country has totally terrorized do you by the people. Do you, do you support the visa policy? Of course, I support it. Mr. Okay. Shakil, yeah. he is talking about so many things at the past of the BNP, but he did not. Mm. To some extent, he recognized and acknowledged. All the political parties, to some extent, more or less, they are responsible for the misdeeds, including BNP. And oh, I thank, yeah. why the American U.S. government uh, got such a wonderful privilege to come to Bangladesh with the mission, as he said, they part part of the population supporting this. Hmm. They are not so much unwanted here. No, it's about not about wanted or unwanted. You know, U.S. is our one of the largest stress partner and no, development so partner. Unwanted in this means, this visa restriction, supporting, it is supported by the BNP and other oppositions. No, BNP's politics is not based on people. BNP's politics is based on US now. Sometimes it seems like that BNP is working to get contested in the US election, not Bangladesh election, right? Because as it's very sad to see that, you know, it had been narrated that you know US is superpower, US has so much might, so what? We are a sovereign nation. We are not like a subordinate of US, right? Definitely we have very good relationship with US. You know. I studied in United States, so what? That doesn't mean that I am subordinate of US. Okay. US have their own policy. That, that's fine. That, uh, I'm, we are not against it. And uh, there, there can be always miscommunication between two nations. Like look now between India and Canada, right? They had been very good friends. Now they are extreme foes, right? So things are always fluid. Things are always changing, you know. And we all always try to convey the right message to US that, you know, you had been fed wrong information. And as uh, Cornell Hawk said, that, yeah, Bangladeshi people, everyone wants free and free election, you know. But as he said, that, you know, most of the Bangladeshi people wants resignation of this government. No, they don't, you know. Do they want? Like one of the most corrupt person in the world, Mr. Tarek Rahman, to be Prime Minister of Bangladesh, do a poll and see what is the result. You know, Bangladesh was the most corrupt country five, in a, five years in a row. So they are talking about corruption. Bangladesh was most corrupt country, right? We accept there are corruption, there are misdeeds. And definitely, uh, uh, we feel regret for that, you know? You know, like the inflation. Inflation is a big problem for us. 
you know that is the single mass problem we are much more concerned about inflation this than us visa sanction right because that is hurting common people but we have to accept also the world reality that inflation is a big problem in us inflation is a big problem in uk everywhere and our honorable prime minister is trying to address the issues social safety net you know the bnp jamaat they were in power more than us why did not they do a social safety net you know in bangla bidoba bata boyoshko bata protibondhi bata why did not they do it they were in power what what were they doing right honorable prime minister did this and that's why even during this high inflation time crores of people are getting benefit okay still we need to address this problem colonel hawk you know very well that bnp is on the street demanding on the one point resignation of the government and formation of cater government and do you think that our league will agree to this very stand or not fine that's very fine question you have asked me let me tell you our league uh, considering themselves they are the patriot party they love the country they love the people <coughs> of this country if they have that affection love and feelings for the country and the people and if they really love this country again i say they must resign because they have lost the credibility to run the country they i, I tell you the corruption there they have done what else required to be disqualified to run the country they have made it a zero economy now how many million or billion dollar are in the reserve only 18 billion can a country like bangladesh run with 18 billion dollar no then you see 30 uh, 40000 crore taka have been plundered by asalam group his cases have been ro- uh, just told uh, take, took, taken uh, by the barrister of his own this present party that our milik shuman barrister shuman that court has given verdict that till uh, january it cannot be discussed just just a minute i, I will come to you again okay. very important point Thank you have you. raised uh, mr sakil mm. we know mr joras through he is one of the ancient saint and prophet and he said when you are at the peak of anything mm. then only option is to come down mm-hmm. come down because you can go up in political science and politics as a student of political science but there is a maxim in politics also uh, do you think did maxim is very much applicable to the political parties in bangladesh in general no the thing is it all depends on people right caretaker government is the demand of bnp jamaat or like the like minded opposition they have you know it's not the demand of uh, bangladeshi people you know they are they are always saying because B- bnp had been doing this uh, you know movement for last 14 years you know it's nothing new right now the thing is when you come to the point of caretaker government what actually happened caretaker government was declared illegal by the apex court not by bangladesh awami league right or not by the parliament at fair as retired hawk rightly said you know it was mentioned what it was mentioned if the parliament wants for next two term if the parliament wants so what happens then then it comes to the parliament and at that time bnp was in parliament so we had a long debate and we parliament members of bangladesh parliament voted that okay we go by the verdict of high court and we annul the caretaker government now he rightly pointed out that caretaker government is the culmination of movement of bangladesh awami league because at that time begum khaleda ji what begum khaleda ji said that only mad people or insane people are in favor of caretaker government and now the, his her party is vying for caretaker government okay what an irony but the thing is why caretaker government became this problematic bnp made it you know you are saying that don't go to the past but you have to go to the past to verify the present now in 2006 what was the point of changing the age limit of the uh, chief justice of bangladesh there was no demand there was no movement 
why BNP suddenly did it, to make sure that Mr. K. M. Hassan, who was the international secretary of Bangladesh, B Bangladesh Nationalist Party, BNP once, that he will become the chief of the caretaker government. And that was the problem. Uh, Dr. Jafarullah Choudhury, he passed away. He is a very respectable person. I have full respect for him. But in one seminar, he said that let there be caretaker government for three, four, five years because the nation needs to be rebuilt. You know, why non political uh, people are there to rebuild the nation? We politicians are there because politics is for political parties, right? So if there is another 111, if there is something like that, who will take responsibility? BNP will take responsibility? They will not take responsibility. Now comes to the point of free and credible election, right? There was no law for formation of election commission. BNP was in power during Ziaur Rahman. BNP was in power in two, uh, 1991. BNP was in power in 2001. Did they make any law for forming election commission? No. Even this time, when the search committee was there, BNP publicly and also inside the parliament demanded and other political parties demanded for a law. And right at that moment, honorable prime minister announced that there will be a law. And it was debated. BNP parliament members uh, uh, participated in the debate. We all participated in the debate. And then the law was passed to have a election commission. Thank First you time. Thank yes. you. 10 seconds. Okay. Now, Democratically, worldwide, the election commission always held the election, and that is the norm. And we all accept, expect that in 2024, a free and fair election will be done under the election commission, not under any government. That is the way it should be. Thank you very much. Colonel Hawk, there is a very, very important saying, and it is being written in the political science and politics and in many articles. Series. BNP paved the way for Aumili coming to power. Historically, how do you refute it? You see, you have rightly uh, pointed out. Yes, of course, Aumili is retrieved, given a new birth by General Jeo Roman. Because Aumili was killed in uh, 10th January of 1975. That, was, that party was totally banished, then Bakshal came in. So there was no Aumili in Bangladesh. And this is the President Jav Rahman, the great leader of Bangladesh, patriot leader of Bangladesh. He revived Aumalik and brought back her uh, um, uh, to two, two daughters from abroad. And that also very good, interesting uh, uh, history how Jav Rahman took care of these two uh, daughters of Bangladesh Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. So definitely, Aumalik is given paved or way by BNP, no doubt in And next, you see, my friend, he told about the verdict of the court. Just I would ask, request him to listen to the address of uh, uh, one other, another judge, senior most judge after Khairul Hawk, what he said about the verdict, what he said in the court and what he wrote in the uh, verdict order. Totally a different thing, okay? This is a lie. That's why people say lie, greed, violence, and arrogance are the characteristics of Aumalik. They do not listen to any logic. They do not listen to any good words. They do not listen to the people. They do not listen to any good thing. They only feel that whatever they say, whatever they think, that is the right for the country, right for the people. But this is not right. Now, as... But, uh, but, but the question is that, what I posed a question to you. Yes. It is said, BNP paved the way, paved the way. for our only coming to power. It means, uh, I understand. It means mm -hmm. the turmoils and the drama were played during the 19, 2006 and 2007. Mm -hmm. Yes. All these things paved the way for our only coming to power. You are right, I, answer, I can answer. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You see, BNP dot, did a lot of mistakes. This is not a uh, uh, very secret thing. Even a, even a boy can say that. You see, they have violated something during their power. Suppose Chief Justice, as my friend said, extending the time frame of Chief Justice, this, they did not do the good thing. Next, the correct people to put in the correct position 
suppose you are anchor today if somebody ill qualify than you is put here this program would not be so good they selected a most uncouth individual i say that i say that word as a chief of army staff who was not fit to become chief of army staff crossing very good professional generals leaving them away uh, sending them on retirement they made a chief of army staff of bangladesh army which has liberated this country given us presented as a country fighting for 9 months and made a chief who was not fit for that position not only that they made a non professional officer a general officer commanding of some division and so many mistakes they did and they are paying that <coughs> now and for that reason amlik took the chance and came to the power and after giving the power they have forgotten their past they have forgotten the people of this country they have forgotten the uh, interest of the country they have forgotten the economy they have forgotten the uh, education they have forgotten that sadhinata chetana they have changed and they are using the freedom fighting or war of independence for the business purpose so and so forth they have totally destroyed this country this country has gone to the bottom of the earth and to recover and most importantly my dear sir tell you they have made corruption to each and every corner of this country no art is left without corruption okay thank you okay. very much we are about to end this talk show mr joy what is his message last words no the message is that uh, bangladesh will run as per the constitution the election will be held as per the constitution and uh, we hope that good sense prevails on bnp and bnp joins the election and as uh, you know previously our honorable prime minister if you remember in 2014 she actually telephoned uh, begum khalid azia you know uh, to join the election time government and i think uh, caretaker government is not an option so it's a waste of time discussing caretaker government because it's out of the question now it's unconstitutional so bnp should concentrate how to make the election commission you know more effective during the election time and they should come up with better proposals to make sure that the election time time government has less and less control over administration and total electoral okay, process okay thank thank you very much okay, mr hawk what is your conclusion one minute time one minute time let me tell you the conclusion the promising bangladesh the program name very interesting so what was the promise to the people by the government by the authority that has to be remembered have you fulfilled the democracy have you fulfilled the social right so, so have you fulfilled the social justice then human honor and dignity no so for establishing democracy equality social justice and human values and many people were martyred in the war of liberation in the year of 1971 all those values have been destroyed today and so promising bangladesh is not now a nightmare for us so last thing i shall tell you my dear sir you are very respected to me you are men of right and correct path i shall pass through the world but once if therefore there be any kindness i can do let me do it now let not defer it or neglect it for i shall not pass not pass this way again thank you <clears throat> well viewers we are about to end this talk show and before ending the talk show let me summarize what the two speakers said both of them are of the same mind about the politics and democracy in bangladesh about the geopolitics in bangladesh about foreign play and counter play here we do but but both of them differ on a point of election time government mr shaki tanbir sakid he is he is in favor of the constitutional continuity and well colonel hawk he is talking about non party category government though mr sakid said politics must be done by the politician and country must be run by the political leaders and that is the final conclusion final mathematics final geometry final calculus politics must be done by the political parties and political leaders must run the country but
because of so many things there are human cry and there are so many discrepancies in our society that sometimes we adhere to the principles of non party character government but what is right and wrong it is up to you both of them what they say i convey the thing to you it is up to you to judge what the right what is wrong and thank you very much we'll meet you again very soon thank you very much